What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to talk about Python's most controversial operator called the Walrus operator. I'm briefly going to explain to you how it works, what it does, and then we're going to look at a couple of use cases, when to use it, when not to use it. And we're going to start with a very simple example. Let's say we have some variable called my value and we assign 10 to it. And then we go ahead and we print my value. This is ordinary Python. This is the assignment operator. We take the value to the right assign it to the variable on the left. And basically when I run this, you can see 10 is printed out onto the screen. This is the basic assignment operator. Now what we cannot do with that basic assignment operator is we cannot go ahead and say something like print my value equals 10. Now, first of all, this doesn't work because that's not a value, but a statement. But second of all, it doesn't work because this syntax is reserved for passing keyword arguments. So remember when we have a function, um, when we have a function, for example, my function, and we have some optional parameter in my param and we set it to none by default. And then we do something here. When I call my function, I can set my param equals something. So this syntax is reserved for passing keyword arguments. And if I do this with print, so if I say my value equals 10, it's going to say type error, my value is an invalid keyword argument for print because print doesn't have my value as a keyword argument. And of course, if I pass an argument, that is part of the print function, then I'm going to have a different effect than the one I want. And this is what the walrus operator uh, does. It's different because basically, if I add a colon here, this makes it the walrus operator because it looks a little bit like a walrus. Uh, this basically does exactly what we want. It basically returns and assigns at the same time, we create this new variable called my value. And then at the same time, we return its value and it can be printed at the same time. There you go. Now, I don't know why this operator is really that controversial. I think one reason might be because that is usually the mathematical notation for definition. So for example, in languages like Go, what you do is when you define a variable for the first time, for example, new variable, what you do is you basically say colon equals some value. And then when you assign a new value to it, so when there's already an existing variable and you assign a new value to it, then you just use the ordinary assignment operator. So maybe it's because it's confusing. Maybe it's because people don't think it's useful. Uh, but in today's video, I want to give you two examples for where I think that this operator might actually make sense. And um, before we get into that, I want to give you a general advice here, a general mindset that you should have when new features are introduced into a language, into a framework, whatever. Avoid this type of black and white thinking where you essentially say, I'm always going to use that or I'm never going to use that. Think about the feature, look at the advantages and disadvantages, and then decide if it's suited for your specific use case or not. Now, you need to be aware of the fact that this feature, this operator was introduced in Python 3.8. So if you use it for some reason, it's not going to be compatible with Python 3.7, 3.6, whatever. And of course, a lot of programmers, especially beginners or intermediates that are not really into every little feature of the Python language, maybe won't understand your code, maybe they won't understand what exactly you're doing. So for some people, the readability is also going to be a problem when you use the walrus operator, because it's not the most popular, and the most widely used operators. So uh, this is something to keep in mind. In addition to that, uh, it is just syntactic sugar, it doesn't add anything that you could not do in some way without it. So it's not something that you have to do. It's just a new way to do something. Uh, and it's a way to shorten your code sometimes. Now let's look at a first example where using the walrus operator can actually be quite useful. And this is a structure that you will oftentimes see in command line based applications where we have some dynamic user input and we need to process it, for example, in number guessing games or in menus or in hangman games, uh, basically in applications where we have something that is executed over and over again, repeated over and over again, where we have user input that we're constantly asking for. And if the user enters a certain keyword, for example, quit or end or stop, uh, then we break out of the loop. And a structure like that oftentimes looks the following way. So we have done, for example, a Boolean equals false. And then we say while not done, we get some user input. So for example, command equals input, please enter a command in this case. So we can also say guess or choice, whatever. And then we specify here as a message Q for quit. And what we do then is we say if the command that was entered is Q, 
we basically set done to true so that the next iteration doesn't happen anymore. And then we say otherwise, we're just going to process the input. So in this case, we're just going to print your command was and then command like that. And when we run this, we're going to see that I can enter, hey, what is up? Hi, and then if I enter Q, it's going to quit and the script ends. Now, the problem here is that we have a lot of unnecessary stuff that would not be necessary if we can do it in a different way. So for example, uh, we don't need that Boolean if we can directly check for the terminating condition in the while header. So if I could do something like while not input and then while this input is not Q. So if I say while input, whatever, while this thing here is not Q, do whatever you want to do. The problem with that is, however, that I need to process the command. So I need to store whatever the input is and I cannot do it uh, without the walrus operator in the header. And because of that, I also need an additional if statement. So what we can do here instead of this is we can say while and then I can just say command walrus operator is input and then uh, basically the same text, please enter a command Q equals quit. There you go. And while this thing here is not equal to Q, let me just shift this down. So I'm not blocking it with my camera. Uh, while the result of this statement here is not Q, we just print the else branch of uh, that we had before. So you or your command was command. As you can see, we don't need a Boolean, we don't need a done Boolean, we don't need uh, an additional if statement, because the if statement is part of the while header. However, without the walrus operator, it's very difficult to do that, because you have to introduce additional, uh, additional variables, and you have to introduce an additional if statement, because the checking for the input and the actual storing of the input happens at a different time. And because of that, we need additional structure. And if we run this now, you can see that the effect is going to be the same. Hey, hi, what is up? And then if I enter Q, it's going to quit. And in this case, we only need two lines of code, one less if statement and one less variable. Another example of the walrus operator being very useful is inside of list comprehensions. And we can not only use it to make things pretty or fancy, we can actually use it to increase execution speed and to decrease execution time. And the example is the following. Let's say we have a list of numbers, my numbers, and we fill it up with five and seven and 18, 28, eight, two, three, 109, and I don't know, four maybe. And then we have a simple function process number. Now this is just a trivial function. For an example, imagine that this function is a very complicated function, a very complicated algorithm, and it takes a lot of time to come up with results. So if I pass a number here, I have to wait like three seconds or five seconds to get a result instead of getting it immediately. Uh, in this case, we're just going to say n to the power of two plus five, for example. But again, this function is a function that takes quite a lot of time to execute for each number. So we don't want to waste it, we don't want to call it too often, because that is going to increase our execution time, and thus decrease our execution speed. Now let's say we have a list my results. And we want to use a list comprehension here to store the results uh, of the calculation. So what we can do is we can say process numbers x, or actually process number, let me remove the s process number x, four x in my number. So basic list comprehension, no, nothing fancy about it. Um, what we can do here now this this works fine, because this is efficient, a list comprehension is better than doing it manually. What I can do here now is I can add a condition. So I can say, okay, do that, but only do that, for example, if x is less than 100. And that would still not be a problem. However, maybe I don't want to know if x is less than 100. I want to know if the result is going to be less than 100. And if it's over 100, or if it's greater or equal to 100, I don't want to store it in the list. So what I could do here is I could say if process number x is less than 100, this would work. The problem with that is, however, that I'm now calling this function two times, not every time because I only execute this one if the condition is met. But still, I call the function twice if the condition is met instead of once, which would be enough. 
um, because you can see here for each number in my numbers, I'm calling it once to check if the condition. So I'm calculating the result for the input. I'm seeing, okay, is that result less than 100? And then if it's less than 100, I have to calculate it again to store it in the list comprehension. Now, of course, I can do this without the list comprehension as well. So I can say my results um, is an empty list, for example, and then I can say for x in my numbers. And then I can say result equals process number x. And then if the result is less than 100, I can just say my results, my results dot append result. And this would work, but this is not efficient. We should use list comprehensions when we can in Python. They're more efficient, they're faster, so we should avoid using that. But we still don't want to call this function twice. So what we can do is we can use the walrus operator. What we can do is we can just say, instead of calculating this here again, we can just say result for x in my numbers if, and now I can say result walrus operator process number x is less than 100. Because here I already calculate the full result only to see if it's less than 100. Instead of wasting this calculation, I can also at the same time store the result in the result variable and then get it in here into the, uh, into the list as a result. So I can run this here, my results. And you can see that this is the result. And if I do it with the list comprehension way without uh, without using the walrus operator, I will still get the same results. And we're not going to notice any difference here in execution time, because the function is quite small, and we don't have a lot of numbers. Uh, actually, I should move that. We're not going to see a difference here in execution speed, because the function is quite simple, and we don't have a lot of values. But if this function is actually complicated, and if we have a lot of values, this one is going to run significantly slower than this one. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.